Aloha. I would like to welcome you to worship from the Central Union Church. We are very thankful that you have joined us today. No matter who you are or where you might be on your life's journey, you are welcome here. You are welcome to participate with us on this day. And we give thanks that together we can all now prepare to worship God. The spirit of truth calls us to what matters. She is the go-between, the connective force that moves from one creature to the next. She invites us to know our place in all things. Every inhale, every exhale belongs to everyone and to everything. She is the constant communication that speaks to the soul of all that exists, all that grows, all that dies. She gives across systemic separation, across species. There is no barrier she cannot overcome. She surpasses human understanding and speaks the truth in ways everyone can understand. She knows our longings, understands our groans, and with merely a sigh, releases a prayer too deep for words. To the dismembered, she brings community. To the walking dead, she brings new life. To the suffering, she makes use of our troubled past. She fuels us, places a fire upon us, gifts us with her inclusive language of clarity and truth that we might begin to understand the hope of God that she keeps in motion the importance of working together as one to dream wholeness dreams into reality. Church, pray with me. God, help us to listen for your voice. Speak to our hearts this day. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord, as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Hear what the Spirit is speaking to us today. We all experience the changing of many different seasons within our lives. There are natural rhythms, stages, Again, seasons that we all experience. I think about the change of season in the region of the mainland where I grew up in the upper Midwest. We had very distinctive seasons. And at this time of year, we would be transitioning from summer to fall and harvest time, the all important harvest time. There was a very natural rhythm to life with the seasons. In the Christian church, we talk of different seasons. We have the season of Advent and Christmas, Lent, Easter, Pentecost. Once again, these are rhythms to our lives. I think about the other ways that we've created rhythms that have become somewhat commonplace for all of us. They maybe give us a sense of comfort as we move through a year. Of course, now in stores, we see all the fall items that are out and 
those for Halloween. They've probably been out for quite a while already. A couple of weeks ago, I was in a store and I saw a large section that had been cleared out and they were slowly bringing out Christmas items already. Once again, somewhat manufactured seasons, but again, they bring a familiarity to our lives. Another rhythm may be that of education and schooling. Once again, I know for myself, we would start school when I was a child, the week after Labor Day, this very week. That certainly gave a rhythm, the coming of fall, the returning to school, uh, Labor Day, meaning the end of summer, and another educational year beginning. There are many rhythms like this within our lives, many stages or seasons that we experience. Um, again, they can give us some sense of groundedness and some sense of comfort. We also use this concept that is really part of who we are. We just intuit these changes. We use this concept also to talk about organizations that have been created. There is something called the life cycle of an organization, and we use that same concept and terminology in faith communities, and we talk about the life cycle of a congregation. Once again, these stages or cycles are familiar. We can intuit what this is about from just our own lives. But they talk about that burst of energy when an organization first begins and the excitement and energy there is when something new starts. And then there's a period of acceleration and rapid growth. But then after a while, things may reach a peak and they have a stage they call deceleration begins. And then finally, there's the last stage where maybe the organization faith community is even considering what their future holds for them. Now, of course, that all sounds so familiar to us because it's much like life. We talk about the childhood stages and youth and young adult, uh, middle age, older adulthood. Uh, we know this whole sense, this whole sense of how we move through these seasons within our lives. I wanted to take a little extra time in this sermon to talk about this natural part of who we are. Because people of faith actually live in a very different way. Uh, we live in a different dimension of life. As followers of Christ, as followers of the resurrection, resurrected Christ, because of the resurrection, we do not live a life that follows those accepted cycles, stages, seasons. We do not live a life that follows that organizational life cycle of initial bursts of energy and growth acceleration and then deacceleration, deceleration. We, we live a very different kind of life. See, in the resurrection, we become new. In the resurrection, we are continually living a life that is one of growth because the creator God continues to work within us as we attempt to become like Christ, God among us. Author Brian Grogan, in his book, to grow in love states the following. We become children of the resurrection. And since we can never comprehend the fullness of God, 
the process of transforming growth in us will continue endlessly. I think about the words that we read this morning from Paul's second letter to the Christians in Corinth. He first talks about the freedom that is ours when God is present, when the living Christ, the Spirit, is present with us. And I think about that freedom as partly involving our freedom from this cycle, these stages that we are pulled into. There's almost a gravitational pull into living this kind of life where we often believe we may be entering a period when we're de-accelerating, decelerating our lives. And then we look at, that's verse 17 that was read. Then we look at verse 18. And it talks about an unveiling. See, we unveil what we know, what is in front of us is taken away. And then we start to consider eternity. Because of the resurrected Christ, we live a life in this dimension of eternity. And in this dimension, we are continually being transformed into Christ. What Brian Grogan spoke of in his quote, but also Robert Mulholland speaks of when he says that we are being formed in the image. We're constantly being formed in the image of Christ for others. And then our passage ended with, a very clear statement that almost to me seems to speak to this intuitive sense of the cycles and seasons we have in our lives when it says that we are going from degree to degree, progressing from degree to degree of glory, experiencing the eternal. Of course, as finite beings, we know this will be an endless, exciting journey for us as we are transformed more into the image of Christ, as we are experiencing and living and seeking more of that eternal life now. When we do consider our lives, our past lives, we know that through all of our experiences, we have been blessed to see how growth is taking place. We have hopefully grown in forgiveness, even as we have been forgiven by Christ and others. We understand the power of forgiveness. We understand the power of grace. And we attempt to grow more in that grace, receive more of God's grace into our lives. Allow it to wash back over all those places where we experience guilt and brokenness and hurt even as we now share that grace with others and see the power of what happens when we look for more opportunities to share grace. We know mercy and we know love, agape love, a selfless love. And we know that when we reach out in a way that puts the other first, a way that seeks out others to be with, not for what it does for us, but for them, we know that we are truly beginning that process of transforming into the image of Christ. We start to experience some of those degrees of glory that shine within us and that then can shine through us to others. It's interesting, even in some of those organizational charts that talk about the organizational life cycle, when you're starting to come down to that point where you even consider your future, they often say there's an opportunity to revision. I think about that as how we live all the time. We're constantly revisioning as we're being transformed and formed in the image of Christ. Our eyes, the unveiling has taken place. And we're always looking for how we can 
share love, even as we seek more ways that we can experience and know the very real presence of Christ in our lives. I think of this time for Central Union. In just a couple of weeks, a new senior pastor will be with us. And you know, we may look at a congregation and again, the natural way we sometimes look at organizations or life is to think of this life cycle. And we think about, well, where are we on this life cycle? But we need to remember we are children of the living God, of the resurrected Christ. We live in this resurrection reality. Um, our eyes have been opened. We have new vision. And we understand that we are moving degree to degree toward glory. And that as we move in that direction, we experience even more the love and grace of God and have the opportunity to share that love and grace in new ways. So may we know that we do not give in to one gravitational pull toward what may be considered natural in this finite world. Rather, we are being pulled in another direction. We're being pulled toward eternity by our creator, God. We are ever transforming and we live in this new environment and excitement that God wants to continually make us new creations. And I believe that is for each of us individually. And now may we have that vision for what it means as a church family to now become a new creation, a new way that together we being formed in Christ's image, but we are being formed for others. To God be the glory. Amen. This world, there is hope renewed in the life that is found in you. You make all things new. You make all things new. Yesterday and forever, your love. Bringing life where it has not been Speaking things that are not as if they were
Let us pray. Creator God, we give thanks that you have brought us to this service on this day. Once again, we think that no matter where we may be, that we know we are welcomed by you. We know that your love draws us to you, that you seek to be with us today and every moment of every day. Holy God, on this day, as we have heard, we know that although there is a pull toward the natural world, we live with eyes that are unveiled. We live with a vision of eternity, a vision that continues to change and grow within our lives, and we pray that we will be seeking your spirit to help us continue degree by degree to know you, to know your glory, and to know your grace and mercy so that we can be your body present in our area and share that good news with others. On this day, we know that many who are watching the service have challenges, challenges that absorb so much of their attention day by day. And once again, we know that we do not look at our lives in a limited way, but know that we look at our lives on an eternal scale. And we know that you are with us. And even though we cannot maybe understand why we experience what we do in this day, we know that you never leave our sides and we have faith in how you are working all these things out in your plan. So we lift all those that struggle, maybe with a physical illness on this day, maybe it's an emotional challenge, relationship issues which are so difficult to work out and to understand. Maybe it's basic living needs we are concerned about from day to day. And yet in all of these, we know that you are present. We pray for those who grieve and we know the process of loss is so difficult and we all experience these losses in different ways. And we pray that we would know not only your presence, but the presence of our friends and family and faith community. And we pray that we will be there for others and know how important it is, how we need that presence. And we will also understand that we need to be that presence to those that walk through dark valleys at this time. Loving God, we pray that as we look forward to the coming of Pastor Rashawn, that we will have eyes that are open, that we will have this vision that allows us to see that we continue to be recreated. And we're excited about how that recreation can look in our faith community. And we pray that we will be open and seeking to what you have in store for us. 
And through all of it, we pray that we will be open and seeking new ways that we can share your love with others. And now we pray that we'll know your presence of all those that are watching on this day as we join in the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, we've gathered together to pray, to be restored and renewed, remembering that all good things come from God, the giver of life. We are called as stewards of God's gifts to share in fulfillment of God's purposes for creation through our labors and our management of what comes from them. Church, let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. There are three ways you can give. You can go online to centralunionchurch.org and click the Give button to give electronically. You may also scan the QR code on your screen and that will guide you through that same online giving process. Or, if you prefer, you can write a check to the church and mail it to the address on your screen. Out of our abundance, we give with thanksgiving, bringing our own offerings so the ministry of this church will continue to participate in the transformative works of God. Thanks so much, Nate. Friends, before we share our final blessing, I wanted to pause to express our gratitude to Pastor Dave Smazik on this final Sunday that he'll be ministering among us. You might remember that Pastor Dave joined Central Union back in January, stepping in to help fill this long gap until the arrival of our next settled senior minister. We anticipated that we would need Pastor Dave's help for just a few months, but he's faithfully remained and shared his gifts with us now for nine and a half months. And so we want to be sure to take some time to recognize him and to recognize his gracious wife, Anne, as well. Mahalo, Pastor Dave and Anne, for your willingness to follow God's call and serve among us. Mahalo for the wisdom and the wit that you have shared. And mahalo also for the good work that you have inspired us to do. You'll remain close to our hearts as you go with our warmest aloha. And now, Pastor Dave, would you send us out with our benediction? I first want to say before I share the benediction that I have greatly appreciated the opportunity I've had to share with you through these online services. Because we live in this eternal sense, this eternal now, I could sense your presence and I just give thanks for your willingness to join us for these services. And again, I am thankful for the privilege to be able to share with all of you. And now may we go forth in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Creator God, and the presence and power of the Spirit that makes us free. Amen. Christ be so As I mentioned, this is Pastor Dave's last Sunday with us, and we are so grateful for him and for Anne. If you'd like to share your own words of gratitude and appreciation with the Smazics, you're welcome to write a little note or a card, and you can either drop it off or mail it here to the church. We'll be compiling those together and then mailing them to the Smazics in Illinois. You can also, uh, you're also welcome to email them. He'll have his email address for the next week or so, so you can reach out in that way if you'd rather. 
Some other announcements to share, just a reminder that September is Give Aloha Month in partnership with Foodland. So if you go to Foodland, you can make your offering there during this month, and that donation will be matched up to $249. Just be sure that if you do that, you save your receipt, and then you can write your name on it and mail it to the church so that you get credit on your giving statement for that donation. If you have questions about Give Aloha, you can call the church office and ask for the accounting department. Also a reminder that next week we will be celebrating Aloha Sunday. At our 9 a.m. in-person service, we'll have the Hawaiian Royal Court present with us. But even here in our online service, we'll pause to celebrate the beauty and the culture of Hawaii. We'll celebrate with Hawaiian music, and we invite you to wear your best aloha attire for next Sunday's service. One final announcement we have to share, which is really a joy that we get to celebrate together, is the announcement that Pastor Rashawn and his ohana are on island. They arrived on Friday a couple of days ago, and they'll be using the next couple of weeks to settle in and get the kids ready for school. And then Pastor Rashawn will join us for online worship on September 24th. So please keep them in prayers as they adjust and as they get settled in here in Hawaii. Friends, I think that's all the announcements that we have, so I invite you to, to go in peace and to spread the love of God. See you next week.